Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children 18 plus, you are tuned in to the Lone Oster Podcast with me, Dustin Owen, and my main man, JC, John Coleman. Deal was popping. I am hella worried right now, JC. Why? Hella worried. He- well, I am supposed to fly internationally for the first time since COVID. Okay. And it's not the COVID aspect that's worrying me. What's that? Well, I went online mm-hmm. to renew my passport. Let's go. Because my passport, by the way, didn't expire before my trip, but someone had once told me it expires too quickly from when I'm supposed to re-enter yeah. the United States, uh. and it's a bad look to try to be getting back in when your passport is expiring soon. Yeah. So they said, you should just renew it. Yeah, just do that. Yep, so I went online to renew it. Okay. I checked their turn times. Yep, slow as hell. They said three to five weeks if you pay the extra $60 to have it expedited. Five months later. Well, three to five weeks, I did the math, Mm -hmm. and I'm like, that gives me a couple weeks to spare. I'll spend the $60. Good for you. Yeah, that was six weeks ago, John. Mm. And I still don't have my new passport, and I literally am flying out in a couple weeks. That's funny that you say that because I was cleaning out my closet the other day and I saw the reminder you get from your tax collector about renewing your tags. And apparently I've been riding dirty for the past like three weeks. No way. Yeah. Yeah, you just had that birthday. Yeah, and I was like, oh yeah, because I, you know, I pay for it two years, like I do two years, so I just forgot and I just threw the paper in the closet and forgot about it. So yeah, your boy could have been, you know, locked up. It's probably not locked up. It's a five hundred dollar fine. Probably I don't know with all the shit I got in my trunk. Shit, that's probably five to ten years. <laughs> Easy. I actually, uh, true story. This was God fifteen years ago. Now mm-hmm. I'm getting old because it seems like it was only a couple years ago. Yeah, but I remember, flies. I remember the house I was living in, and I haven't lived in that house <laughs> since like 2012. Yeah. But my wife and I were driving to a Halloween party. Mm. So I, you know, I'm all in like town, like all within like the the two cities yeah, that we live yeah. within. So, like, I wasn't drinking. It was going to the party, not coming yeah, home okay. from the party, right? right? Yeah. So, I make a left, and then whoop, 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 whoop. Yep. Bright God. blue lights behind me. I'm like, oh, oh Vito, please. serious? Thank it was you. winter springs, please. Even more better. Mm. <laughs> no and I get pulled over, and lo and behold, it's like a buddy of mine from, no from high school. But really, like, we worked together at the Home Depot both while both in college. Yeah. While I was in college, he was in the police academy. Uh-huh. So he walks up to me and I'm like, oh, it's Kevin. I'm like, what's up, Kevin? He's like, I go, license. I go, by the way, I go, what did I do? He's like, your tag's expired. License I'm, and registration. I go, get the hell out of here. I go, my tag's not expired. He's like, I wouldn't bullshit you. He's like, your tag's expired. Yeah, I pulled a JC. What? But except for mine was like nine months expired. Something had. Did you get points on the license or you let you go? No. He's like, dude, you're an idiot. Do me a favor. After you get home tonight, right. make it your priority to get to I th- get it I done. I can't wait. It was hilarious. I thought one day, because the universe has told me this, you're going to be driving, and they're going to pull you over, and they're going to he's going to pull down his little shades, and he'll be like, license. Re- I'm so- Are you done from the podcast? Oh, I love what you do, man. Don't even worry about it, man. You're going to get oh, off of Only if that happens to people like Dave Ramsey and Clark Howard. I don't think only people- Only that. I think you have a higher profile than them. Interesting that you say that. Only time will tell. So, hey, y'all, go ahead and say a little prayer for me if you pray. Do a little uh, happy dance if, mm-hmm. you, if you're if you into dancing. Do something so that my passport mm-hmm. shows up on time. Now, I did reach out to the Department of State, mm-hmm. State Department. You wrote the senator, the and, I, and I did write my congressman. I'm like, WTF, I need some help here. Did you get your auto reply? Thank you for writing your console. We will get back to you shortly. Like, did you get any kind of reply? Any more just for me to be able to send my message. I had to, like, sign up for his weekly newsletter. Oh, my gosh. It's all right. Hey, it's somebody new because Stephanie Murphy was my go-to girl. She did not run again. So it's somebody new. I can't remember the the, the dude's name. He looks like a decent enough guy. So hopefully someone from his team will get back to me. And hopefully a... Pat, new passport is going to be expedited and it'll be in my little hands by like well, this if it's, if it's by, not, by this weekend. If it's not here by this weekend, I told you you can just take your happy house on a spear flight to Miami and go to like the Port Authority. They'll give it to you same day. That's crazy. Mm-hmm. That is crazy. I may just have to do that. Hey, um, how about the swag? Shout out Panhandle people. Apparently. How about the swag all the way up on the table? By the way, JC, you missed the boat on this. Earballs. You missed the boat. They beat you to the punch. What's that? A, you told me you were gonna make some T-Lop swag ear balls. with ear balls. <sighs> they yeah. did. So so really awesome opportunity. Yeah. I wanna give a couple shout outs here, so bear with me. Yep. Last week I had the opportunity to travel up to Destin, Fort Walton Beach, which mm-hmm. is the panhandle of Florida. It's called the Redneck Riviera, or some folks call it Lower Alabama. 
It is some of the most beautiful beaches that you will ever set foot on. Really? It's a gorgeous part of the country, gorgeous part of the state. Um, and it's a little bit rednecky, so it has a little bit of, of everything right, for right. everybody. So jokingly, the locals call it the Redneck Riviera. They call it L Lower Alabama. But I had the opportunity to go up there because Trustmark Bank was having their annual sales rally for their mortgage department or okay. their mortgage division. Yeah. So shout out to Brock, Dean, and Jordan. So they put this event on for their 100 plus LOs and yours truly mm. was given the opportunity to go hang out with them for a couple hours and speak for an hour and then do my favorite 30 minutes of Q&A. Mm. I love, love, love Q&A. If I could just do two or three hours of Q&A and never have to give a keynote, that would be my preference. Yeah. But I do understand that sometimes people like the keynote aspect. And a shameless plug for tloponline.com, if you are a premium member of tloponline.com, you have access to a monthly town hall meeting. Mm -hmm. Our monthly town hall is coming up next week. And that is a hour long Q&A session. Why is it Q&A? Because that, that's my preference. But no, shout out to Brock, Dean, and Jordan at Trustmark for hosting. And then some of their LOs, uh, Rusty, Nicole, it was great meeting you all and everyone else that I met, but I haven't had a chance to remember their names. I promised everyone I'm terrible with names, mm -hmm. right? So I left Trustmark and um, there's a branch with Bank of England Mortgage. And we shout out Bank of mm -hmm. England because Bank of England to me is, is one of those independent mortgage bankers that if I was looking to enter the mortgage industry or I was looking for um, a new home, like I would look Bank of England's way, mm -hmm. right? They have a decent reputation all throughout the footprint that I'm familiar with. and. They are true independent mortgage bankers. What makes them a little bit unique is they are owned by a bank, kind of like Waterstone Mortgage and others out there. Our Luminate Home Loans, I think, now has some bank ownership to it. Prime has some bank ownership okay. to it, et cetera, et cetera. I think Gateway bought a bank, Movement bought a bank. So it's kind of like the new it thing. But anyhow, the crew up there, they're like, hey, Dio, we heard you talk on the podcast. We're huge fans of the show. Could you swing by? I'm like, yeah, I'm going to be literally like 10 minutes yeah. down the road. Yeah. Sure, on my way, leaving the Trustmark event, on the way to stop and see my own branch in Fort Walton Beach mm -hmm. and take them all out to dinner and, and do a meeting with them. Actually did the meeting on video content yeah. and leaning into right. using your services yeah. as loan originators. Right. Um, I stopped by and I had lunch with the people at Bank of England and uh, I did like an hour presentation for them, kind of mm -hmm. like the understanding your sales DNA right. was the topic of it. So their leader is Michael Cassaberry. So uh, shout out to Michael for putting Michael. all this together. Uh, Michael's assistant manager is Steven. Shout out to Steven. And I know I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lose some people. Like, I know I'm going to forget some people. Like, I told them all, like, hey, I did my best to remember everyone's name. Mm -hmm. Like, not everyone has a name as unique as Sapphire. Shout oh, out to Sapphire. Yeah, That's an easy it. one. Yeah, yeah. That's an easy one. But there was Beth uh, up there. There was Sean, the ex-retired uh, Air Force dude. Uh, we had Stephanie Morgan, Morgan, uh, ex kindergarten teacher, JG, JG. Yeah. JG. He's like, Hey Dio, if you can't remember my name, I think it's John Gill. Okay. He's like, just call me JG. I was like, Oh, that's yeah. super easy. Right. We had Anna, Anna, Anna used to sell Harley Davidson's room, room. Yes. Um, Sapphire, Kyra, Ashley, that shirt I think was made by Ashley. So shout out to Ashley. Um, who else do we have out there? Megan. Mm -hmm and barry and michael, michael yeah, yeah. like yeah it was like it, it was it was an awesome time so thank you all for the southern hospitality i'm yeah. much appreciated hopefully i brought value to both your organization's trust mark as well as bank of england yeah Whew. damn that's everything now that's what's popping jc that's what's popping i know you stayed up late watching that all-star game it was trash i don't watch any all-star games anymore because they're all trash that's the pro bowl it's that's the horrible NBA. it is terrible major league baseball is worth watching only when they uh -huh. make home field advantage to the world oh, series yeah. when when home field advantage is is part of who wins the mm -hmm. all-star yeah then then it's worth watching the all-star game last night was no bullshit longer than the super bowl from the pageantry from the beginning to the end, it took like four and a half hours. Yeah, I don't I don't mess with that. Neither. But you know, the XFL is back. Let's get tickets to the Orlando game. Yeah, I saw jo Josh Gordon score a touchdown. Oh, my God. Is that where he is now? That's where he is How now. How the mighty have fallen. Uh, you know what? Just for smoking a couple L's? I think it's more than smoking. I think he actually has a substance abuse issue as it pertains to alcoholism. Oh, really? Yeah. 
And it's one of those where it prevents him from showing, showing up, up to, to meetings on yeah. time, showing up to practice, being in the right mental and physical shape. True story, but, but uh, yeah. I used to show up to football games with a buzz. <laughs> I'm sure you I, did. I, I, have you ever done that? I no. was a swing cat. I know, no, so it's different. You, you I, talked I'm, about I'm being serious. A, yeah, you, I, were, you were a senior on JV. I was a senior and on JV, yeah. and I was a JV captain because I was a swing cat. So I was out there. I, I, I promise you, I have no shame. I'm older now. I might have threw back a couple Miller lights before a game, <laughs> and that was the most fun I've ever had in my life. Okay, no, I never did that. Um, I've done some really dumb Immature things in my yeah, life. That was not one of them. Before a football game. No, I would have gone like I would have gone like mailbox bashing at two o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, okay. Yeah, right I before thought, practice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. You know, to where everyone can see you, your friends, the cars you're in. Right. And then when the cops roll in. Okay. Uh, yeah, like that's some dumb stuff you may do as a teenager. But no, John, I was not drinking underage and then showing up to my. JV football game while I was a like, senior. Yo, oh, yo that yeah, that I quit playing oh JV my, my sophomore year. Some of us like midway gifted, through. Some of us weren't gifted athletes. No, maybe birth. you just went to one of those prep schools that were loaded with nothing but D one <laughs> talent, and you were JUCO talent. Yes, that's thank the you. story. Thank you. I that's like that narrative much better. But okay. we're not here to talk about my follies as a high school athlete, if that's what you call it. No, we're not at all. <laughs> we we're gonna talk. This is a really cool topic, right? Yeah. So. Um, I've been training really hard lately. And when I train, I tend to do some of my best thinking because look, when you're on a bicycle for two hours and you forgot your, your earbuds. Oh God, you did. Oh, you get lost in your thoughts. You how far were you when you thoughts. were like, how, how far away when you realized you didn't have the buds, it's too far away to turn around. Once I'm out, out of my, like, my neighborhood, yeah, that's, like, too that's, too like, yeah. that's too far. <laughs> that's too far. I, if, if I'm, gonna, I'm not trying to like, uh, okay. look, I'll okay. deal with it. Right. Plus on race day, you can't wear them. Right. So you need to do some training yeah, okay. with, without them. So, but yeah, I get lost in my thoughts and. You know, I had this thought about winning and more importantly, like winning the offer. And then I had this thought of winning the offer as it pertains to like a home buyer who is trying to purchase real estate, making sure that they get their offer accepted. Is it just any offer or is it the best offer? Is it any price or is it the price that they wanted to pay or is it less than the price that they wanted to pay? Mm -hmm. And then I started thinking, well, how does that correlate to our loan originator friends? Like our mortgage professionals who are out there helping these consumers come up with the financing that is necessary, needed, or even required for them to purchase this real estate. And then obviously the professionals on the real estate side who help negotiate the offers, whether it's listing agents and buyer's agents. And being in and around the industry for the past 20 years as a seller, as an investor, as a buyer, as a loan originator, as a branch manager, or as an executive of a mortgage company, or heck, even the host of a podcast, mm -hmm. I know a thing or two, and I have some experiences because I have purchased dozens of homes and sold dozens of homes, and I have originated thousands of loans, which means I've given consultations mm -hmm. to tens of mm -hmm. thousands of people, and I know hundreds of realtors and have worked with hundreds of realtors, right? So like over the time, Let's take everything that I've experienced and let's use it as a learning lesson. Let's do it. All right. So like I started thinking about this and kind of work with me a little bit mm -hmm. as I work this thought through. When I am buying a home and I want the best price on that house, I need to make the most solid offer. Can you guess what the most solid offer could be when purchasing real estate? Uh, full price cash offer. Okay. Cash offer. Yeah. yeah. Well, full price cash. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The best <laughs> is full price cash, no appraisal, no inspection. Yeah. Just give me quick, a quick closing. Yeah. I'll okay. Pay, I'll PayPal you the money. But if you're willing to pay cash and close quickly and have a no appraisal, but a two or three day inspection, you may be able to negotiate the cheapest price, mm. right? Because when you're negotiating, when you are a buyer in a power position, you can sometimes talk that seller off of their ask more so than a seller that has a buyer with, with less certainty, right? And that's the lesson that we're going to be teaching. How do we make the best financial decision as it pertains to negotiating the cheapest price, getting the best loan and, and understanding the risk assessment that all sellers go through when they're accepting offers. Okay, so that is the best offer, John, the cash offer mm -hmm. that we just discussed, but so few can actually afford to pay cash, right. right? So few can. Now, if you can, that could be your strategy 
because there is always something called delayed financing. And if you want to know what delayed financing is, I double dog dare you to go to YouTube, go to the Lone Officer podcast, yeah. subscribe. Yeah. And then I want you to, on that page, mm -hmm. I want you to search the page for delayed financing. We did an entire episode on it. But if that's not you, then here are some things I want you to consider when you are out making offers. It first starts with the known versus the unknown. Here's what I've learned in my experiences, especially as a seller, someone who has homes to sell. The very first thing that my partners and I do in the real estate investment company, when it's a financed offer, I want to know who's doing the financing. Really? Yep. Who's doing the financing? I don't care if it's VA or FHA or conventional. I care who does the loan. Is it a company that I'm aware of? Is it a company that my realtor who's listing the home is familiar with? Is it a company that my realtor has worked with? Is it a loan officer that my realtor can reach out to, get that person on the phone and make sure that we have someone who knows what they're doing and they're accountable to us, the listing agent, as well as the seller, mm -hmm. right? Because when I accept your offer, I'm taking the home off the market. So that's 30 days now I need to carry the property because I'm probably paying some kind of interest. Mm -hmm. And if I'm not paying interest, then that those funds that are tied into purchasing that, that owning that home are not being deployed elsewhere. I have insurance, I have taxes, I have utilities, right? So there's a, a certain opportunity cost that when I take a home off the market for 30 days, I need to know that there is certainty behind the transaction. I want to know, is the lender reputable? Is the lender experienced? Is this transaction really gonna close? Hmm. And that goes into my decision-making as a seller on accepting offers. Now, there is, Lenders out there, I haven't heard of, or they don't have the best reputation, or it's not a quick closing. At which point as a seller, I have to take that into consideration when negotiating the offer. So here's the lesson right now to home buyers. To home buyers who are not paying cash, y'all need to understand that who is financing your property matters. It matters to you getting your offer accepted but hold on, wait a minute, ding, 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 slow down and listen. It may actually matter financially as it pertains to you getting the best offer accepted. Because you can get any offer accepted, John, right? You can. Be willing to pay the most money for that house. You'll get the offer accepted. Put down a crazy amount of earnest money deposit and make it non-refundable, <laughs> yeah, okay. right? It's, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, like 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 <clears throat> you make it so enticing that, hey, yeah, you'll get your offer accepted. But that doesn't mean that's the best offer for you. Did it really make the most sense to put down $20,000 deposit non-refundable if you don't close? Would it really make the most sense to pay 10 grand over appraised value? Like, no, well, how, how, how aggressive or how clean mm -hmm was your offer. Mortgage lenders, here's how you make yourself crazily valuable to your home buyers and their agents. Can you close in three weeks? Can you get an, a, an appraisal done in seven days? Can you get a conditional approval done in seven days? If you can do those things, now all of a sudden, that realtor and your buyer or their buyer, your borrower mm -hmm. can start making offers that stand out as it, put, as it pertains to maybe a 45 day close with a 15 day appraisal and a 21 day financing contingency, mm -hmm. right? So these are things that you can do to, to, to stand out. As a lender, you can pick up the phone and advocate on behalf of your buyer, your borrower. In fact, home buyers, if your lender is not willing to reach out to the listing agent and advocate on your behalf, is that really the lender you should be working with? Like, that's a question to ask yourself because there's a dollar value to that advocacy. And I'm gonna walk you all through that, that dollar value. But right now, what I'm trying to walk them through is just the overall thought process of making the best offer or getting the best offer accepted. Because again, you can get any offer accepted if you just mm -hmm. make it enticing <laughs> right. enough, right? Yeah like an offer that they can't refuse, but that's not the goal. 
The goal is to negotiate the best financial offer for you that the seller is willing to, to accept. Mm -hmm. All right, so check out this math. Because I want people to think about this. Too many times, home buyers choose their lender for all the wrong reasons. And John, we spent three years and 300 plus episodes putting together <laughs> lots of content yeah. that, that circles around Give this. me the cheapest rate, damn it. I just want the cheapest rate. Cheapy, cheap, cheap. Correct. They don't care about, they don't know. It's not that they don't care. They don't know that there's no such thing as a one size fits all mortgage. They don't know that mortgages must be tailor made to match their specific needs, wants, and goals. Mm -hmm. Because it's about getting a loan that you qualify for and it matches your financial needs, wants, and goals. So it must be specifically tailored to where you are in life, your financial situation, and what your short and long term goals are. Mm -hmm. Okay, so they don't know that. So they want to know well, what's the cheapest? Lender fees and what's the cheapest interest rate? Yeah, what can you give me? I, I want to pay something cheap so I don't have a, a large monthly payment. And cheap comes with a cost. So cheap comes with a cost. And I think very few mortgage professionals are using their big boy and big girl words to convey a message to their consumer of what that cost really is. And I know home buyers and their realtors do not understand what that cost is. So if you'll bear with me, I'm gonna try to geek out on some numbers mm -hmm. and some hypotheticals, but these hypotheticals are hypotheticals based on almost two decades of experience mm -hmm. as a loan originator, as a home buyer and a home seller, right? I've been able to do all three, definitely more loans than most people have ever closed. Mm -hmm. And I've purchased and sold now more, more homes than the average bear. Mm -hmm. Like obviously not more than a professional realtor, mm -hmm. but compared to the consumer, I definitely mm -hmm. have. All right, so I want you to think about this. Let's say I'm a home buyer. My name is Billy the home buyer. Mm -hmm. And I went with cheapy cheap interest rate dot com. Cheap cheap blinds direct. Remember that guy? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. I actually bought appliances from Appliance Did you? Direct. Was it I dented? Would, I would reckon yes, they were dented. And I would highly recommend it because it worked. <laughs> because they worked for a decade. Gosh. Yes. Shout out. Shout out Appliance Direct. Yeah, in They're Orlando, in Florida. <laughs> yeah, they are still in business. Uh but no, yeah. So cheapy cheap dot com because you're gonna get a quarter percent cheaper interest rate, yeah. which by the way, a quarter percent on a $300,000 loan, mm -hmm. right? It's about, mm, do this math real quick, 45 bucks a month. Mm -hmm. So a quarter percent on a $300,000 loan is about $45 a month. Now you're going to have your mortgage five to seven years, 60 to 72 months. So when you take 45 bucks, mm -hmm. multiply it by 60 months or, or 72 months, you're about three to $4,000. That's the difference between using your local lender who quoted you 6% versus cheapy cheap online who quoted you 5.75. It's 45 bucks a month or roughly three to $4,000 a year. Now, cheapy cheap.com may very well not have the, they don't have the service where they call the listing agent and they advocate on your behalf. They don't have the reputation or they don't have the experience of working with the local market. Therefore, they're unknown. I'm not saying that they're not good at what they do. And I'm not saying that they wouldn't be willing to call the listing agent and advocate on your behalf. I'm just saying they normally probably don't do that, right? There's a reason why they offer cheap interest rates mm -hmm. because they have a, a cheaper overhead, cheaper service proposition, and they win on based on being cheap. Mm -hmm. Well, think about this as a home buyer, not having a lender who advocates on your behalf, not having a lender who would be willing to add, to uh, reach out to the listing agent, to do things like Tuesday status update calls, to be willing to close you in three weeks, get the appraisal done in seven days, and a financing contingency in seven days, mm -hmm. you may very well have to negotiate a higher sales price. And let's just say that higher sales price on a $330,000 home, right? Cause your loan's about 300 grand. So your, your purchase price is somewhere around 325 to, to 330. Let's just say you ended up having to pay an extra five or 10 grand, right? That was the cost of the negotiating, right? The seller looked at you and they said, are you paying cash? You're like, Nope, Nope. You're using financing. Yep. Am I familiar with your company? Is my realtor, the listing agent familiar with your company? And are you trusted? Well, the answer is no. Then I'm still willing to accept your offer, but on my terms, because 
I, as a seller, and I'm uncomfortable. Mm. And your lender has done nothing to make me feel comfortable, right? It's not my fault or maybe their fault that they don't have a reputation in my marketplace. Maybe they just started buying leads in this market and the real estate community hasn't had a chance to work with them. Mm -hmm. Or the real estate community may have had a chance to work with them and it's been 50-50, it's been spotty. At which point I, as a seller, have to take that into consideration. So John, I'm going to be willing to accept your offer so you can use cheapycheapmortgagecompany.com so that you can get a quarter percent better interest rate. But instead of selling you the home for $320,000, mm -hmm. I need three thirty. Yo, what? I well, I listed it for three thirty, John. Right, but yeah, I, I mean, I, and you and you wanted three twenty. I, I mean, I can't do that. Mm. And you're like, ah, uh, you know what? I can't pay three thirty. Let's do three twenty five. I accept three twenty five. Now, had you used a lender that I knew, that my realtor trusted, mm -hmm. that was accountable to us, that had a good reputation, I probably would have done three twenty. But nope, I listed it for three thirty. You offer 320, I counter back at 325 because I'm not comfortable mm. with your lender. That just costs you $5,000. In a normal market, does that happen often when like a seller will look and like, like I don't like that, don't pick him, but pick that? Like Yes, that... but give me one second because okay. I want to walk people that math. Okay. I just said that negotiation, $5,000 is what it cost you. Yep. What was the interest savings between or using cheapycheap.com? or percent, your... right? Yep, it was three to four thousand dollars over five to over over five to six years. Right. What? It seems like a delta there. Wait a minute, there's a delta there over a grand. <laughs> yeah. So I'm happy you got that that cheap interest rate, but guess what you just did? You probably just paid five thousand dollars more for that house because you didn't have the negotiating power that you could have had. Mm. This is where I think people are just uneducated. They don't know any better. And by the way, mortgage professionals, that's on you for not educating them. We're making today's episode so that you're learning something new so that you can start to work these numbers for your market and then use them when you're presenting, when you're triaging, mm -hmm. when you're talking to potential clients about using you and your services. It's not about the rate. It's not about the fees. It's about the service. And what does that service do to help them negotiate in your market? Your service may very well be worth five to ten thousand dollars. So, do you really have to match? Cheapy Cheap Online may have the same interest rate, but they're only charging half a point, and you're charging a full point for that rate. Well, again, on a three hundred thousand dollar loan, that's a fifteen hundred dollar difference. But if you help that person negotiate a three, five, or even ten thousand dollar cheaper sales price, wasn't your extra 50 basis points in discount worth them using you in order to get the seller to, to accept their offer. And I don't think enough home buyers know that who is doing their financing matters. And that is taken into consideration when all negotiations are happening. Yeah. Yes. I just received an offer, literally new construction house, brand new construction. We just got the CEO last week, just got an offer on this house. The offer is about, it's the home's listed for 625. The offer came in at 595. Mm -hmm. They wanted a 45 day close. They wanted a 15 day inspection. And it's with a credit union mm -hmm. that you all have heard of this credit union because they're a national credit union, but they don't have the best reputation. Now, if that was a cash offer, closing in 15 days would have taken all day long. Literally, cash offer. 15 days, five day uh, inspection period, we would have taken the, the 595. But it's a 45 day close using a credit union that we're not necessarily, we're not not fond of them, but they just have a reputation of um, being slow at processing and underwriting and not necessarily doing the best pre approvals up front. Mm -hmm. Right? True story. Okay. So now we're countering. We're countering 310, 30 day close. Five day inspection, 15 day appraisal, right? Like that's our counter. Had they been using a lender that we knew better and liked better, we probably still wouldn't have done 595, but we'd have done 605. We'd be willing to go down to 605, but look, we, the home just CO'd. It's only been on the market for like three weeks. And we're in a fairly normalized market right now where it's taking 60 days in order for homes to sell. That's normal three days or six hours, that's not normal. Mm -hmm. 
And we still believe in the industry that you very well in the next 90 to 120 days. So we're sitting right now, end of February, beginning of March, 2023. We're saying in just 90 days, it could flip back into more of a seller's market. More because yes, rates will start to, will continue to come down, but there's, there's just no inventory and home builders aren't building any inventory. So the little bit of inventory that there is, there's more buyers that want it. Therefore, sellers are going to be given a bit of a competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. So yes, things like this matter. And I don't think enough mortgage professionals, real estate professionals, and I sure as heck know home buyers have never put into context the price that they pay to use an unknown lender. So they think they're doing something good. Oh, I'm getting a cheap interest rate or I'm saving a couple grand in lender fees. But my question to you in return is, but are you paying five or $10,000 more for that house because of the lender you chose? Mm -hmm. Cause I know right now a contract we're negotiating real world example. I'm going to paraphrase it again. We would have taken it's listed for 625. We would have taken 595. If it was a cash offer, quick close three day inspection, we would have taken it. There's no way we're taking 595. We would have taken 605 if it was using one of the lenders that we respect in this market, FBC mortgage, Homebridge, Waterstone mortgage, mortgage firm, right? Those are the four in my market right now that I'm like, yeah, if they're doing it, it's good to go. And there's even a couple of people over at cross country that if cross country was doing it, whether it's like Joe Manglardi or Bill Segrist, we'd be like, yeah, we know those LOs, they're top notch. They're great at what they do. Right. If Credit Christie was doing the mm -hmm. loan, I'd be like, hell yeah, that mm -hmm. thing's good to go. Right. But they're using a credit union. Nah, no, they offer 595 our counter and our, our hard counter is 615. And we are still going to ask them to change their closing date to 30 days and not 45. And we're still going to lower their inspection period. Mm -hmm. Right. So like that's a real world example. Y'all home buyers, I'm average. As a seller, I am, I am as average as they come. I am smack dab in the middle. This is what you're getting. So you need to take into consideration who is doing your loan. Lenders, you need to take into consideration, what am I doing to make sure I'm helping my buyer's agent, that's your referral partner, my, my borrower, that's your client, negotiate the best deal for them. Are you offering quick closings? Are you offering some for, form of reprieve, whether it's a PIW uh, on the appraisal? That's a property inspection waiver for those who didn't know. Look at you go, John Coleman. Look at you. I paid attention. Are you are you offering to get uh, financing contingency done by a certain date? Mm -hmm. Right? Are you making the phone call to advocate on their behalf? Because that may be the difference of them getting that at six oh five versus six fifteen in the case of of the home mm -hmm. that we're selling. Or in the example I gave earlier, maybe the difference of them getting the home at 320 versus 325. Mm -hmm. And borrowers, the consumer, man, there's more to your lender than the interest rate and the fees that they offer. There is a service and that service can save you thousands of dollars. So you may have to be willing to give up 45 bucks a month for the next 60 to 72 months or even 84 months to save five or 10 grand on your purchase price. And by doing so, you're also going to make sure you get the right loan that you have someone who is your advocate. They have your back. They are accountable to you and your realtor. Please take that into consideration when you're choosing the lender that's best for you. Mm. So as we summarize, like there are two different offers that you can get accepted, right? There are two different offers. There is the best offer that comes with a culmination of the realtor you use, the lender that, that, that you select and how they advocate on your behalf, or it's the offer that was too good to refuse. So the seller had to take it. And when you're a buyer, that's not the offer you want to be having accepted. You want the offer where you are in the negotiating power position, or at least more powerful than you would have been had you not had the right realtor and the right lender advocating on your behalf. Well spoken said. Thank you, sir. 
So check this out. As we conclude, as we conclude, Con -con conclude. Yeah. Pew, 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 pew. You making fun of my stuttering You're, habit? Uh, it's not a stutter. Me, Bo Jackson, Who? Joe Biden. Never heard of him. No, come on. Right? Shut up. What? Bo Jackson, one of the Bo best knows. athletes ever. He's the best lacrosse player that ever. Was, that was Jim Brown. That was Jim Brown. I know. Okay, good for you. <laughs> no, but if um. That, now you threw me off. Don't, I, 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 I was the one that stuttered. Don't get m mad at me. Earballs, Dustin. Remember earballs. 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 In, you were saying, in conclusion, in summary. In, there's, in, in summary. There's a right type of loan, and then there's the not right type of loan. We're not talking about loan. Offer. Offer, yeah. Accepted offer. Right. Yeah, accepted offer. No, I think I was going to plug TLOP Live. Again? Why not? Why not? Right. Hey, Orlando, Florida, we're already up to 55 RSVPs. We've already asked the venue to open us up to over to 100. Uh -oh. we, will, we will max out 100. Um, so, you know, it, and I know that if we get 100 people to RSVP, probably 70 will show up. Mm -hmm. uh, that's the unfortunate part of doing free events. I think in the future we may have to charge like $10, put that $10 going to charity. Yep. Just because I've found that if people have skin in the game, mm -hmm. you get a much better buy-in. Mm -hmm. But no, TLOP Live, if you want to know the details, if you want to RSVP, go to the website. Mm -hmm. It is theloanofficerpodcast.com or tloponline.com. If you're looking for additional content, mm -hmm. training content, resources, links, PDFs, Excel spreadsheets, tools, Damn. trackers, et cetera. Yeah. It is also on the website. It is free to become a member, and we give you a boatload. Shit ton. Shit ton. That's metric. A shit ton of free resources. We also have some, like, premium resources, mm -hmm. such as the town hall meeting, such yep. as the online community, such as some powerful scripts mm -hmm. and, and our better trainings. We ask you to give a $25 monthly donation. For we Starbucks. For, it's, it's, it's for Starbucks. But check it out. We are trying to book West Palm. So I reached out to a couple of my contacts down okay. in that market. We're trying to get West Palm scheduled for end of uh, March, beginning of April. Okay. Probably going to do Jacksonville. Oh, shit. Yeah, we're looking at doing Jacksonville possibly in May. So I talked to my buddy Steve Richmond. Steve's been on the show. Shout out, Steve. Steve's a phenomenal public speaker awesome and presenter. Uh, yeah, Steve and I may be up in the Ponte Vedra market for the Mortgage Bankers Association of Georgia is doing their their annual. Oh, shit. So we may be up there so we can parlay us being at, at uh, it's called MBAG, but Mortgage Bankers Association of <laughs> Georgia. MBAG. Yeah, us being at MBAG, we could do a TLOP live event either the day before or the day after. And then we can play TPC Sawgrass. Possibly, John, if that's what you're into. Yes. If that's what you're into. I don't golf often, but I'd be willing to golf there. Yeah, let's do Only it. Only if I can play hole 17 over, over and over and over, and over again. again. Yep. I'll put it on the corporate card. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> put it on the corporate card. <laughs> yeah. So, no, um, you know, please keep tuning in. Please keep sharing. Please keep liking. We are trying to grow this audience. Yeah. And if you want to book Dustin, just go ahead. He's open for, he's open for solicitations. He'll come to a neighborhood near you. I, I am open. Yeah. yeah I'm, I'm I definitely open. I, um, I, I thoroughly enjoyed myself at Trustmark and mm -hmm. both at, at Bank of England. I uh, enjoyed myself earlier this year when I did something for uh, Old Republic, mm -hmm. and I've spoken on several Zooms, whether it's for Damn, UCF, whether it's for UCF. the Mortgage Bankers Association. Yep. And, uh, yeah, I like the live events, though. I really do. Uh, I like getting connected with people, getting one-on-one, face-to-face. -on -face. It's a good time. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it gives us an opportunity to promote the show, promote the website, You're a micro celebrity. and bring value. You're a micro-celebrity within the mortgage space. Not yet, because I haven't been pulled over and the cop didn't recognize me. You've spoken into existence now. Make sure the tags is updated. But that's all the time we have for you to say. <laughs> He's John Coleman. I'm Dustin Owen. And we'll catch you on the next episode. Bye.